Hey everybody, welcome to Rebel Media. Today we're in beautiful Chattanooga, Tennessee. We just spent the night here at this fine establishment for 40 bucks. Can't beat it. Uh, we're gonna jump in the car, we're gonna head north and go check out some things I think you guys are gonna like. June 24th, 1863. June 24th is my birthday, so I had to check this place out for sure. This was the site of the Battle of Hoover's Gap. And uh, the Tullahoma campaign, I think, is often overshadowed by Gettysburg and Siege of Vicksburg. So there are these big things going on. But this, I feel, is a, a place where the Federals started to gain the upper hand, and it's all you know, it's overlooked by those other two major battles. But right now, we're standing where this took place, and we're going to kind of explore the site and uh, see what's going on. Using the GoPro today because of the rain, so I've never filmed a whole video with the GoPro. We'll see how it comes out. We got a speaker up here. How do we turn it on? Welcome to the site of the engagement at Hoover's Gap between the forces of Union General William Rosecrans and Confederate General Braxton Bragg. This battle began on June 24th. 1863 in the early afternoon in the drenching rain that lasted for about 10 days. It was raining on June 24th. It was obviously much more hot and much more muggy and warm than it is today. But it was raining, so that's kind of cool to be here in the rain, I guess. Up here was the Union position, and these graves have sunken over time. So before 1850, the pioneers, they would bury their dead and the animals would dig them up out of the ground and their loved ones would be get eaten by the animals and stuff. So they'd build these tall uh, rock carns on top of their dead. And uh, I guess these used to be, you know, six feet higher and men were actually behind here, you know, using them for cover. But over time they've sunk into the ground. That's what I was just learning about over there. This is just saying that I guess in 1954, they re, uh, restored the cemetery here. Forest farewell order. Civil war such as you have passed through naturally endangers the feelings of animosity, hatred, and revenge. It is our duty to divest ourselves of all such feelings and so far as it is in our power to do so to cultivate friendly feelings towards those whom we have so long contested and here for so widely but honestly differed neighborhood feuds personal animosities and private differences should be blotted out and when you return home a mainly straightforward course of conduct to secure you the respect of even your enemies. I have never, on the field of battle, sent you where I was unwilling to go myself, nor would I advise you to a course in which I felt was unwilling, I myself was unwilling to pursue. You have been good soldiers, and you can be good citizens. Nathan Bedford Forrest, some words of wisdom, 
monument you're standing before was installed in 1954 in preparation for the centennial celebration. Over here to our left, that would have been the narrowest part of the gap. But this is the gap, this section through here. Well, we're having a bit of a rain delay, hiding under this pine tree for a minute. And up and down, right here, are the graves of unknown Confederate soldiers. This is where 50 unknown Confederate soldiers who were killed at the Battle of Hoover's Gap are at rest. Confederate soldiers have been hastily buried in fields and pastures nearby, and in some instances the graves were so shallow that their remains were showing. Through the efforts of the late David Jacobs, a retired educator and historian, and with the help of the Sons of Confederate Veterans, an additional $5,000 was raised for the land to be purchased. The SCV continues to care for the cemetery today. Unfortunately, the rain's really starting to come down now. But over here, we've got William T.F. Pike and Charles Henry Johnson. See if we can fix his flag up a little bit. Looks like he could use a, a fresh one. Over here, this talks about the 18th Indiana, uh, the Lightning Brigade, John T. Wilder. He had uh, seen these Spencer rifles and he found a way to finance them to his men through his bank. So these guys, they came in here with seven shots and waterproof cartridges and they were, you know, a force to be reckoned with. So Rosie basically, General Rosecrans, I call him old Rosie. Uh, <clears throat> He basically tricked Braxton Bragg. He he didn't know where to send the troops. Like he sent them in two different directions. So he didn't know. You know, the Confederates didn't know where they were attacking from. And when the Lightning Brigade shows up here with the Spencer repeating rifles, they they get hit, they get blindsided. They don't know what to do because they haven't seen that kind of firepower. It's got it can shoot seven shots in a row and it has a, a waterproof cartridge and these guys are still ripping paper cartridges and it wasn't good, you know, but <laughs> All right, Spencer rifle favorite of Abe Lincoln Morgan Freeman General Custer Yes, and me. But the Lightning Brigade, as they're called, they held their position and uh, basically saved the battle for the Federals. And this was a real turning point in the war. So, uh, again, often overshadowed by the two major events happening in uh, Mississippi and Pennsylvania, but this was important. Pledge to the South. The South is a land that has known sorrows. It is a land that has broken the ashen crust and moistened it with tears. A land scarred and even riven by the plowshare of war and billowed with the graves of her dead. But a land of legend, a land of song, a land of a hallowed and heroic memories. To that land, every drop of my blood Every fiber of my being, every pulsation of my heart is consecrated forever. I was born in her womb, I was nurtured, nurtured at her breast, and when my last hour shall come, I pray to God that I may be pillowed upon her bosom and rocked to sleep within her tender encircling arms. It talks about the cemetery, and you can just play Dixie.
Well, we're we're on to the next stop. I'm gonna head over Stones River next. So that should be cool. Hopefully the weather holds up for me. But if you're uh, near War Trace, Tennessee, come check this spot out. It's cool. It's real. I could spend another hour here easy. But unfortunately, I'm on schedule. I gotta keep moving and get down the road. Until next time, guys. See you later. Gonna start doing another fun thing here, guys. We got uh, a Rebel Media Challenge coin right here. QR code on the back. We're gonna leave it right here inside the cannon. So, should anyone come out here and find it? Be sure to tell me.